Welcome to the premiere episode of the Nintendo Craft Corner. I am, of course, your host, Josh Thomas, and as I'm sure you're aware, the spooky season is in full bloom. It is Halloween time, and so I thought it would be a pretty good idea to make some Halloween Nintendo arts and crafts to kick this series off. In today's very first episode, we are gonna be making these Animal Crossing Halloween candles. As I'm sure you can tell, one of them is themed around Jack, the czar of Halloween, and the other one is themed to the mysterious fortune teller, Katrina. That one is black licorice, and of course the Jack one is pumpkin spice. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys step for step how to make them yourself. So let's get started. But before we do, as is customary on the uh, Nintendo Craft Corner, we first have to go over all of the supplies that you are gonna need. So let's do that. So the first bit of supplies that you're gonna need is some sticker paper. You can find this all over the place. Almost any store has this kind of thing. Um, look at this, I got mine for $9.99 at Hobby Lobby, but I used a coupon and I got it cheaper. You're also gonna need, of course, some glass jars. I went with these chubby fat jars because they're kind of cute and cool. Just make sure they don't have anything on them. You want them to be a nice flat surface so we can put our labels on them. And of course, we're gonna be using these candle scents. I got some black licorice and pumpkin spice. It is premium quality. So, ho ho, you know I mean business. You're also gonna need some string. Uh, it's gotta be somewhat thicker, like this stuff right here. You don't want very thin stuff. Uh, you could also use ribbon if you wanted to. You're going to need, of course, some big sacks of unscented wax. Uh, these are two pound bags, again, Hobby Lobby. Uh, but look at this, uh, it says that the wax has a high resistance to fat blooming. What the heck does that mean? I don't know, but sounds like a good thing. Naturally, you're gonna need some candle wicks. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you buy candle wicks is that they're the right length for the size of your candle jar. So you, you know, keep that in mind, because if they're too long, well, you could cut them if they're too long, but if they're too short, that might be a little bit of a problem. I think these will work though. We're gonna want our candles to have the proper color, so I have some candle coloring dye liquid. I got red, yellow, and blue, because we're gonna mix these together to get orange and purple. It's also going to be a good idea to have some swatches of fabric, just go to Joanne Fabrics, Michaels, wherever, and pick some stuff up. I went with a blue and purple for our Katrina candle, and an orange fabric with little gold dots for our Pumpkin Spice Jack candles. Obviously, you're gonna need some paint. So um, I have black right here, but we're also gonna have some orange and purple and whatnot. I like to go with a matte paint, and then you're, ne you're gonna need some sponges as well. I really like this. The sponges are called Spouncers. This video is sponsored by Sponsors. Not really, but that's kind of an amazing name. Also, we're gonna need some sculpting clay. Make sure that it is sculpting clay because otherwise it's not gonna dry that well. It'll crack when it dries. Oh, and we're also gonna need some nail clippers, apparently, because I'm realizing that my nails are not ready to be filmed in up-close HD video for the internet. I apologize about this. There we go. Now we're ready to craft. So the first thing uh, that I decided to do with this project is to design the labels for our Halloween Animal Crossing candles. I'm using a program called Flash. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Um, you can use all sorts of things. Heck, you could use Microsoft Paint if you wanted to, but just some sort of design program uh, is a good idea uh, when making these labels. If you wanted to make these labels just by drawing them, and then like scanning them into a computer and then printing them out. You could do that. You could, you could draw them from scratch. That'd be really cool. I just decided to do it digitally. You could use Photoshop. I think most people would use Photoshop and I am gonna use Photoshop later on. Uh, but for now, I just, I don't know. I really like designing things in Flash and then exporting it as a PNG because Flash of course makes vector artwork. You can do that in Photoshop too, but I don't know. I just, I like using Flash for a lot of things. It's good to have a lot of programs in your arsenal of, uh, of things that you're capable of working with. But you know, for the designs, I wanted them to be somewhat simple because I, I want the labels to have a retro look to them. So I'm, I'm keeping it simple by only using three colors. For the Jack candle, I'm using orange, black, and white. And for the Katrina candle, we're gonna go with purple, 
black and white. So I think in not using a lot of colors, it's definitely gonna give off the right vibes that I'm looking for, sort of a silhouette look to it. So the labels are totally designed now and I have them printed out on our sticker paper. I have to say, I did go through a lot of trial and error to get the size proper. So obviously you're probably not gonna be using the exact jar that I have, uh, but you can change the size of these labels to fit the jar that you're going to be using. Um, but I did have to go through a lot of trial and error to make sure they are the proper size. Um, and by the way, worth noting, I got my glass jar from Hobby Lobby. They have a lot of different types of jars and they're relatively inexpensive. So now that we have our labels printed out, it's obviously time to grab our glass jars, get some black paint or whatever color paint you want to go with. I'm going with black. We're going to get our sponge tool and we're just going to go around and dab the heck. Yes, that's right. Dab the heck out of this glass jar uh, with the paint. And the reason I'm using a sponge instead of like a paintbrush is that the sponge is going to, it's just gonna be a much cleaner paint job. It's going to spread the paint more evenly and you're not gonna see the brush strokes or anything. And also, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's just really fun to keep dabbing this jar with the paint. It's, it's weirdly satisfying. You may have noticed that I also have these smaller uh, jars as well. These were from the Dollar Tree and they have this little uh, tea light holder inside of them. So I didn't decide to go with these necessarily for my main candles, but I am gonna actually make two additional candles using these jars. And I don't want the tea light holder in here, obviously. So using my He-Man strength, I'm just gonna rip these bars off here and just use the lid. So while we wait for the paint on our jars to dry, I'm gonna move on to sculpting the little character heads that will sit on top of the lids of these candles. I think the best advice I can give you is to definitely have some source material to look at, you know, some reference material of whatever character you might be sculpting, and just take your time. There's no rush. Honestly, I'm sort of just, you know, I'm not really gonna obsess over it looking exactly like Jack or exactly like Katrina, because I think there will be a certain level of handmade charm to that. You know, if I wanted this to be exactly like the characters, I could just have a 3D mold printed out and that would be that. But I, I want it to have a handmade feel to it. I think that'll give it more charm. So, you know, just having fun. I do have this little tool, which is used for sculpting in clay. It's just like a little rubber pencil tip tool and uh, it kind of helps get some better lines and some better indents in the clay. If you add parts to a clay figure, like if it is uh, an arm or an ear or something like that, if you're adding a small bit of clay onto a big bit of clay, you need to do some things to make sure that when it dries, it doesn't crack. So one of the bits of advice I would give you is to definitely use some water Put some water in and, and think of it as like you're welding that part to the character. So for like Katrina's ears, I definitely want to make sure that when it dries, those ears don't crack. And one of the reasons that happens is because the ears are so much thinner than the rest of Katrina's head that the ear clay is going to dry faster because there's just less clay there. And so that is what causes it to crack away from the damp clay of the rest of her head. So you wanna make sure that you, I would say, and this is just based on my experience, I'm not a professional, but make sure that you add some water to the area that you're welding on to the bigger part. So here we have the finished Katrina and Jack clay heads. And I think I'm pretty pleased with this. They're pretty good. They have a nice handmade quality to them. And I think at the same time, they look close enough to the actual characters. So. Let's let these dry. It is about a day later, and we are now gonna have some fun painting these clay figures. Um, the painting part is obviously the fun part. For Jack, I'm gonna literally use jack-o'-lantern colored paint. How perfect is that? It was right about now that I was feeling kind of hungry, and I wanted to get myself a little snack, so I made these amazing, classic Pillsbury sugar cookies. I just wanted to point out that it's always a good time to take a little haunted snack break. <laughs> as I'm sure many of you are aware, the devil is in the details, as they say. Do they say that? Is that a phrase? For some reason, I think that's a phrase. I'm going to assume that the devil is in the details is an actual phrase. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is because I'm adding little details of various types of shading. Now, Katrina has a little bit more detail because she has this like headgear jewelry going on. 
So I'm just taking my time trying to replicate that as best as possible to do smaller details. If you don't have a very small, fine paintbrush, what you can use, and I actually do this a lot, is just use a toothpick. Take a toothpick, dip it into the paint a little bit on the tip, and then just go in there and slowly lay that paint down and you can get a very fine line. And it's also something you can do a little slower than a paintbrush, I think. Now I just have a little piece of red felt that I cut out and I cut little slits that will go into her ears. So the ears will poke out over this. And this is just her little like head gown thing. What is that called? I don't know. I'm clearly not a fortune teller, uh, but this is just the, the red fabric uh, that is on her head. Um, I'm using hot glue to keep it on because to be honest with you, I am a huge supporter of hot glue. I use hot glue way too much in my life. I've burned myself a lot. Uh, so be careful when using hot glue. Uh, you can use any kind of glue though. Um, I prefer hot glue because it dries quite quickly. Okay, so we're gonna set our little clay heads aside and I'm gonna start working on the fabric that we're gonna put over the lid. I was thinking of Katrina. I wanted to find something that looked sort of mysterious and kind of fortune teller, you know, gave off fortune teller vibes. Uh, so I went with this blue and purple. It's got a really cool little beaded pattern going on in there and I'm just cutting out like a little square piece and uh, essentially what I'm gonna do is trace along the sides of the lid and then from there oh ho, ho, you guessed it we're gonna use our trusty hot glue gun I'm just gonna put hot glue uh, to uh, you know keep the fabric on the lid and then along the sides I'm gonna put hot glue and then watch what I'm doing with my little fingy things here my that's my fingers I don't know why I call them fingy things cuz I'm an idiot uh, but watch what I'm doing with them. I'm kind of bunching up the fabric as I push it down on the hot glue. And the reason for that is because it makes it look a little more, you know, fancy. I'm just going to take some of that string from earlier and I'm going to tie it around the lid just like this and tie it nice and tight so that it's not falling off or anything like that. And this is obviously not holding the fabric onto the lid, but it, it just kind of gives the illusion that it is. It's just, a, the, the string is really just there for an extra bit of detail, but extra bits of detail, that's what makes the world go round. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm also doing a couple bonus candle jars that are smaller. And for those, because there's not gonna be a clay figure on the top, I thought it would be kind of fun to just use this lacy spider web fabric that I had, you know, put that on the top. So I had an idea for this project to add some fake autumn leaves to the top of Jack's candle jar. Obviously, this just gives it more detail. I think it'll really pull it together. And then, of course, once we get all of these leaves glued along the top lid, I'm going to plop Jack's head in the center of them. And I just think this pulls it all together a lot better. Okay, so here we are in my kitchen. It is time to melt our wax. The process of doing this is a little bit weird. You need to get a larger pot and you need to fill that large pot with water. From there, you place a smaller pot inside of that one and it's gonna float on the water. And that pot on the top is where you're going to pour the wax. The reason you do this is so that the wax does not burn. Now, according to the back of the bag, they do suggest that you use a thermometer and boil the wax to a certain temperature. And even though I, I did that, I did get a thermometer, uh, I paid no attention to it, to be honest with you. I just kind of used it as a mixer for the wax. I don't think that's totally needed, um, but I guess if you want to be, you know, really official about it, you can read the back of the bag of wax that you bought. But if you're like me and you're stupid, it doesn't make any difference. I don't think we need to know the temperature. And of course, while we are waiting for the wax to melt, one of the things we can do is get a little dab of hot glue, put it on the bottom of our wick, and then stick the wick on the bottom of the glass jar. Once the wax is melted, we want to get our, our various scents and pour them in. And of course, next up, we want to mix our red and yellow coloring, our liquid candle dye, uh, to make it orange. Because, of course, this is the pumpkin spice candle. I feel like a mad scientist mixing all these little chemicals together. Once the wax is melted and you've mixed the scent and the coloring together, it is, of course, time to pour it into the glass jar. I definitely would recommend that you use a funnel or something to help you put the wax in the jar. Uh, I did a terrible job of getting the wax in the jar and it kind of spilled all over the place. So don't be like me. So as you can see here, we had a little bit of a, a, little bit of a problem with the wax. I'm just gonna give you a pro tip. Pour the wax 
and then paint the jars so you don't have this problem. This isn't a huge problem. This is a bit of a mess, and we did ding up the jars with all the hot wax, but I'm just gonna scrape this off and then repaint them, and they'll be good as new. And once again, here are the final results for our Animal Crossing Halloween pumpkin spice and black licorice candles. I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. Even though this tutorial was about making Animal Crossing Halloween candles, maybe some of you are just not gonna be able to make the candles. Maybe you can't melt wax on your stove or something like that. Maybe that's too much work. As you can see here, I just put some purple fairy lights into the jar instead of the candle wax, and it's pretty cool. I think this would be really great as like a little night light, a little Animal Crossing night light, and you don't have to worry about the wax. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of the Nintendo Craft Corner. Hopefully you make these candles along with me. It was really fun to do, and I'm pretty pleased with the way they turned out. I mean, we got some haunted Animal Crossing candles for Halloween season, and they smell very good. I want to point that out. I can't really stress that through a YouTube video, because YouTube is not something you can smell yet, but trust me, they smell quite good uh, when you burn them. So thank you for watching, and I will see you very soon with more Halloween arts and crafts.